Hello, this is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before and Happy New Year. I hope that 2023 brings good things for all of us. So I've had a lovely Christmas break, um, been away visiting family, spending lots of time with my own family here at home as well. Um, so I haven't been filming. And so it feels like it's been a little while since I have put a video out. But it is the perfect timing to be doing my quarter four review video. Um, so I do things a little bit differently on this channel. You might notice a lot of creators um, tend to put out year in review videos in January and I really love watching those. Um, but I did my first one of those in April when I had been diamond painting for a year and I figured that I would just continue that tradition. So I will do a whole year in review video in April. Right now, what I'm doing is my little review that I do every three months of what I've completed that quarter and what I am currently working on. So that's what this is going to be. So as ever, I'll keep my reviews of the, the completed paintings that I've done fairly brief because there are post review videos of almost all of these. There is one that will only feature in this video. Um, so if you want to see any more detail on any of them, please do go check out my other videos on the channel. Most paintings I work on, I have kitting up videos, post reviews and sometimes kitting down videos for. So there's, there's always lots of detail available on them. So I've got five paintings that I completed this quarter, mostly on the small side, which is why it's been a bit more productive. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's have a look in order of completion. So the first one I managed to get done was wheat fields. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll probably have seen this one before because this is one I had, well, whatever the diamond painting equivalent of writer's block is. Um, and it took me the longest time because it's only a small painting. It is 59, oh no, that's the fabric size, 51 by 39 centimetres and round drill. So it's really not a big ask, although it is chock full of confetti. Um, but something about it when I was working on it just didn't, it didn't gel with me. I think probably because there was a lot of confetti in the same sorts of colours. Um, you know, everything's either yellowy orange or green or blue. And whilst I love those colours and I love the completed effect, um, I just, I found, a, I'd get a little bored of just working in green or just working in yellow. I like variety of colour, I, I realised through doing this painting. So in my last quarterly review video, I had a few paintings that were hanging around that I'd just had on the go for ages and were really kind of, I was feeling a bit blocked by them because I didn't want to just put them all aside, but I wanted them done and out, out of the way so I could move on to more interesting projects, for me at least. Because um, there's nothing wrong with this painting, this was, this was all a me thing. Um, so yeah, I, I was about halfway done, I think. And I, I said, you know, I'm really hoping to just keep chipping away at it. And then um, about a week later, I went back to it and I just like something clicked. And I just, I finished half the painting within about four days. So it's ridiculous that it had taken me so long to get to that point. So yeah, it is a lovely completed piece. It was worth finishing. The colours are super vibrant. Diamond dots paintings you can hopefully see in the light there are very very sparkly they've got lovely quality multifaceted resin drills that really catch the light and that's lovely so it's it's a great painting if you're a confetti lover diamond dots is is widely available um and a good brand the one downside i find to them is they have um my sort of not so much preferred canvas style which is this quite thick stiff canvas doesn't really roll up very easily um, and it tends to be quite grainy um, obviously you can't see it now but the the printing area isn't as clear as it can be with some other companies it was all fine just you know not not my favorite so yeah I got it done and I have to say I felt a lot of satisfaction at managing to carry on and get it done having had a bit of trouble with it so that was my first completion of this quarter. The second one that I did was in October for Halloween and it was Jack O' Lantern Time, 41 by 41 centimetres from Diamond Art Club. I wanted to do something for Halloween this year, but I didn't want to tackle something huge because 
I don't know. I, I liked the idea of doing something seasonal, but at the same time, I'm not a big Halloween person. So this kind of felt like a good fit. It was a painting that I had picked up really, really cheaply on a D-Stash group earlier in the year. Um, so it was quite satisfying just to get this one done when it was seasonally appropriate. It was a fun painting to work on. I think it took me about six or seven days. Did it all in one go. Um, it had glow-in-the-dark drills, which I've never experienced before. So they're not charged at the moment, so there's not much point in me turning the light off to show you. Um, in my post-review video of this, I did put up a picture of how that looks if you're not quite sure how glow-in-the-dark drills work. So you charge them with light, and then obviously when you turn the lights off, with, with UV light, that is, and then obviously when you turn the lights off, they will glow. So anything that's black, so all the outlines and spiders and bits in the hat, they all glow in the dark and the moon does as well. Besides that, a couple of other things that I mentioned in my post review were that I really enjoyed the range of colours. Um, 42 colours in such a small painting meant that there was a lot of variation, which is really key for me in enjoying painting, as I just mentioned on wheat fields. So, you know, all of this was these orangey colours, but then I was kind of done with those for the rest of the painting. There were lots of blocks where I was able to use my multi-placer and get things done quite quickly. Um, one negative that I did pick out, and it's only a minor negative that I picked out when I was doing my post review, is that this painting was made when Diamond Art Club was transitioning from their old style round drills to their new style round drills. Um, and there's quite a visible difference with their round drills. The old ones had a much flatter effect. They were very, very shiny, but they had quite a smooth surface. And then the newer drills have a much more faceted like, and therefore angled surface. So I just, me being really fussy, I didn't quite like having such a mixture. It's not a criticism of Diamond Art Club because it was just inevitably going to happen on kits that were caught really in the middle of that transition. Um, but yeah, that was one thing that just irked me a tiny bit just because I am fussy about such things and one thing you may notice if you have any kits in your stash from that sort of period okay the next painting that I worked on and finished in I think it was about no November or so was abstract cat this is another diamond art club painting um, I do feature a lot of Diamond Art Club paintings on this channel just because they are my favourite company and I buy a lot from them because I just find the quality so good. Um, I would like in 2023 to get a bit more variety featured on the channel. I do have other kits in my stash from other companies that I really do want to try. Um, so that's kind of my goal for this year. But I have to say, <laughs> for quarter three, four out of my five finishes are Diamond Art Club. Anyway, it is what it is. What can I say? I really like them. So this was a 51 by 51 centimetre painting based on the art of Eve Izzet. So it's the largest completion I've got here, although it's not actually a particularly large painting in Diamond Art Club's kind of um, in the range of sizes that they do. <laughs> it's probably towards the smaller size of things. It was a square drill painting um, and it had all, almost all of the newer square drills that Diamond Art Club started to phase in in, in 2021. Um, and that meant that it had a nice tightened grid, the canvas, they kind of just bring in the dimensions ever so slightly once they made that transition because the newer square drills are so uniform, they fit together really well. So you don't need extra space for kind of wonky bits. Anyway, the reason I mentioned that is that this one was a little bit of a landmark painting for me because I finally got the hang of using larger multi-placers with this painting. I have been trying and trying and trying for ages, using my four places fine and then just finding the transition to a seven placer too tough and getting really frustrated when everything went wonky. And with this one, it finally clicked into place and that's great because it opens up so many more paintings for me. It's not about rushing through them. It's about the fact that I don't like big blocks of colour and if I have to do them with a much smaller multi-placer or a single placing that's going to really drive me mad so it puts me off buying certain paintings. If I can get through them quicker with larger multi-placers, you know, maybe even larger ones again in the future, it means those paintings aren't off limits to me anymore. So that was a really good thing that happened when I was doing this painting. 
and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's just lovely. I love cats. I love blue. I love purple. Um, you know, all the nice pastel-y shades were lovely. I find, and I was thinking about this the other day, it's quite funny, I'm really drawn to kind of abstract style art in diamond paintings, but in real life, I'm not always a big fan. Um, I don't know why that is. Like, if you go to a sort of more modern art gallery type thing, that that's not my thing. I prefer classics, whereas if I'm doing paintings, yeah, maybe it's the colours. It's all about what I enjoy working on, and, you know, you tend to get these bright vibrant colours. I really want to get a sneaky cat I think at some point which is a piece by the same artist Eve is it that Diamond Art Club offered that's really big and long and I had it once and I de-stashed it um, because I figured I was never going to get around to it and I got this one and I thought well I'm probably not going to do both but I don't know <laughs> I might reconsider it in the future because it is a really lovely painting and I enjoyed it a lot. Okay, on to two paintings that I have not shown as much of on the channel yet. So this next finish is one, I think it was in my last quarterly review, but other than that, I don't have anything on it. The reason being, this is a painting I picked up to work with my son. He is Ottomad, and this is Otter by Patrick Lamontang at Diamond Art Club. Um, so I didn't film things like kitting this up because I was doing that with my son um, and whipping chats. Although he did very quickly lose interest. <laughs> He's recently turned nine um, and concentration on things is not always a strong point. So he did start out with me. Um, so some of these corner bits around here were done by him very well, I would say too. But then he did lose interest. So I finished it off and did the vast majority of it. Um, I finished this in November, ready for his birthday, um, but then we still haven't got around to actually framing it and hanging it up yet. It will go in his room eventually. Um, and also, I, I haven't kitted it down yet, so I do plan to do a bit of a post review, because obviously I'm featuring it now, so I won't go into too much detail, and a kitting down video on this soon, so I can get that storage case available for use again. Anyways, um, so it only had 23 colours which was something I don't usually go for. I go for paintings with a lot more colours. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I will say that the lack of variation in colours at times made it feel a little bit slower going for me. There were a few times I had to step away because, like, if you look at the, all the detail on the otter, it's beautiful, but it is just intense confetti in various shades of brown and beige. Um, yeah, and that would get a little bit much at times. <laughs> so then I'd have a little break and come back to it. It's round drills, I probably should have said, and it's 59 by 43 centimetres. So another kind of medium-ish to smallish size painting. I love the otter. He's so cute. He's got these little orange ABs in his eyes. And I love just the shading, like, you know, the, his nose is largely blue, <laughs> which obviously it, it, it would be a black nose and it's just the reflection from the water. I just, I love how artists are so clever about their use of colour and then how when you're diamond painting, so you're actually using the colours that maybe your eye would have adjusted when you looked at the painting, if that makes sense. Because the artist might have used blue because of the way the light fell. But when you look at it, because you know the otter's nose is black, you just see it as black. And then when you're actually diamond painting it, you're like, oh, it's blue. I don't know. I don't know if that kind of little ramble <laughs> made any kind of sense. Um, but yeah, um, there was quite a lot of colour blocking around the outside. So that did help it to go a bit quicker, even though the, the middle bits were slower going. Um, it was also the first round painting I worked on from Diamond Art Club with their newer, really, really faint guide circles. Um, and I have to say, at first I was not a fan because for me, I quite liked the old guide circles. I found that, yes, they would show more clearly if you didn't place your drills well, but they helped me to place my drills better. So that was OK. Whereas with this one in the early stages, I felt like it really wasn't as straight as normal because I just couldn't see as well. But I got a lot more used to it. And by the end of it, it was fine. It wasn't a problem. So I've seen this mentioned a few times in the Diamond Art Club VIP Facebook group and people saying that they don't like the changes. I will just say, I, I know what you mean. I felt the same way. 
but if you persevere, you will get used to it. So that is Otter. And then we move on to my final completion, which is Gnome Carolers. Um, so this is a 47.9 by 42.6 centimetre diamond painting. It's rounds again. So I did quite a lot of rounds this quarter, actually, didn't I? Um, I finished this shortly before Christmas. It took me a little longer than I hoped because I was ill throughout December. Till now I had COVID. Um, so yeah, it, it took me quite a long time to get done. And as a result, I haven't got round to doing a proper post review video. And I'm not going to do that now because it's January. <laughs> I just, I don't really feel like making a whole video on um, like a really Christmassy painting. So I'm probably not going to show me kitting down this one or doing a post review. So we'll just cover off what I thought about it now. So um, it's a smallish painting but it wasn't mega quick because there is quite a lot of confetti in it particularly if you look at things like these trees um but even you know when you look at the sky yeah you could use your multi-placer a fair amount but still there was quite a lot of changing of colors i really enjoyed these iridescent drills hopefully they are showing okay in this light they're like crystal drills um and i really liked the contrast of having those in the sky for the stars um i did that row last so it's quite fun finishing off that way the whites the whites and pale blues and all the pale colors that make up the snow just absolutely gleam you always think of dark colors as, as being shinier and catching the light more but yeah it, it just the whole thing just shimmers and shines and it's really pretty I love the contrast between the sort of the bright reds and greens of the gnomes and then the background. I just find that really fun. And also I love the way that they rendered the lamps. Look at that with all those ABs in there. Isn't that pretty? And obviously it really catches the light. So yeah, it was a really fun and Christmassy painting. I think I said when I kitted this up, like I wanted to do a Christmas painting. I didn't want to embark on the other Christmas painting that I have in my stash this year because it was a really big one. Actually, I've got two quite Christmassy ones um, and both of them are quite a bit bigger and more involved. I wasn't starting it till December and I wanted something that I could do within December. So hopefully I'll pick up one of those other ones this year. Um, but yeah, I like working on paintings when, when they make sense seasonally, as I said. So this was a new release this year, the week that Diamond Art Club released like loads and loads of Christmas paintings. And I just thought it was the perfect little snack size piece. And it was. I very much enjoyed it. So those are all my finishes this year. Now let's have a look at my two works in progress going into 2023. Okay, the first of my two whips is my oldest um, start out of all of the ones I'm showing today the painting that's been kind of driving me mad all year because I love 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 the art and I just don't enjoy working on the painting so it's been a very long slow labor of love gradually chipping away at it I am um, in my last quarterly review video I featured this one and wheat fields that I showed you before and one of a painting and they were the ones that were really kind of dragging me back and making me feel a bit frustrated with my diamond painting wheat fields I got done this one I knew I wouldn't give up on and I was just going to keep chipping away at. There was one other painting that I actually, it was the only painting that I've ever decided to just give up on. And that one I kitted down and then felt much better about. Um, this one, it's, <laughs> I keep trying to explain because um, it's very much a me issue that I think it's just taught me a lot about the difference between artwork that I love and artwork that I would love to diamond paint. And I think in the early days of picking paintings to work on, I would very much just go for anything where I love the artwork. And at that point, I was still single placing a lot more. So I wasn't as faced by confetti because it didn't really matter. I was going to be single placing anyway. I'd just be changing the colour a bit more often. But then as time went on and I got more confident with multi-placers, even though it was only a four-placer for a long time, 
um I think I'd, I'd just I'd, I'd get a little bit frustrated then if I had to do a lot of single placing just because it felt like it was going so much slower and this one just the confetti in this one has been extreme at times like if you look at these flowers down here I mean it's harder to tell actually isn't it when when drills are on let me find a patch to show you what it, what this painting can be like so can you see over here the kind of <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a lot and I think one of the things is it's not just a lot of confetti it's a lot of confetti specifically in green <laughs> I think I counted them one of um, these videos where I featured this because this has come up time and time again because it's been going on for so long. And I think I found something like 12 or 15 shades of green out of the 67 colours in this painting. And that's what I keep saying is, is, is a thing I've really learned. I like variety of colour. I don't like working with the same colour over and over and over in a painting. And that's exactly what this is. And there's a couple of other things as well where um, Dreamer Designs are a good quality company. I like their work a lot. Their older style canvases with this thicker, tougher canvas. In my workstation where I work on an easel, they're just a little bit harder to manage because I work with big paintings on the easel by like clipping them over the top. And then the completed bits that I've done, I roll up at the bottom and I find it quite hard to roll up neat enough that it's out of my way. So I'm kind of trying to drape this one around and it gets a little bit tricky. Also with their older canvases, as you can see, it's perfectly clear enough to work on, but it just has a slightly grainy texture to the printing, which if you like to use a light pad like I do, it just, it doesn't work quite as well. You have to turn your light pad right down low. And I know that I can do that and then it's easier to see, but I like to have light behind it. That's how I, I see best. So it's, it's just, yeah, just little finicky things. I actually ordered from Dreamer Designs again the other day for the first time in ages to see what their new canvases are like. So we shall see. The drills in this one also aren't all amazing. Some colours are fine. Some are really quite trashy. Um, someone did tell me on my Instagram account that the period, the exact period when I ordered this one, which was around July 2021, they were having some problems with their square drills and that they can be a lot better. So whilst the square drills haven't been upgraded, I'm, I'm hopeful that the newer one that I've ordered is going to be a better experience. But as I say, most of my problems with this have been to do with just the, the confetti and how slow going it is. But I have made progress this quarter. I think I was maybe only about halfway through last time I showed you and now I'm what? I mean, over two thirds of the way through. <laughs> Just this, this flap to go here. Unfortunately, it is mostly green. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. Um, But yeah, I plan to just keep chipping away at this. And I hope and plan to get this one done before April. Because I started it in April last year, would you believe? So I want to get it done within the year and then I feel like it's not gone too horrendously badly. So we shall see. Okay, that brings me on to my last whip. Right, it's a big one, <laughs> so I can't show it all in frame. Um, let me just try and pan around to show you a little bit more. This is House on a Cliff that Diamond Art Club released in their mystery boxes that came out in September, their very first ever mystery boxes. Um, and I stayed up till 2 a.m. British time to get one because I just, they were going to be six paintings for the price of about three typical paintings um, and with a, a, a free gift thrown in as well. And I just thought I'd try it and I managed to get one of the very first run of mystery boxes because what actually happened was they sold out so, so, so super quickly that they then put together a second box. And then there was even, I think, a third version because there was some glitch where people in Canada couldn't buy. So they put one for them because 
other people in other countries have missed it because of, of being a bit slow or technical issues, but like it was available in their countries, whereas Canada, no one could buy it. Um, so yeah, there were three versions and this came in the first version. So I was very glad I got hold of it because the kits in the second version, if I'd been a few minutes later, they, they weren't as much my sort of thing. Whereas I was really happy with what I got in the first one. Because this painting, as soon as I saw it, I was like, that is one of my favourite paintings I have ever seen. I have to own it. <laughs> and it was exclusive to that box. So you either got that first version of the mystery box or you had to buy this on D-Stash. And, you know, the nature of supply and demand means you sometimes have to pay a little bit more for things that there, there isn't that much of. So yeah, I love a landscape and I just find the colours in this one beautiful. I think it's slightly whimsical, you know, this little cottage up on the cliff and you've got your rope bridge and this dramatic like waterfalls in this gorge and then the lovely colours in the sky. It's beautiful. I just, I really love it. And I have been so, so enjoying working on this painting. I cannot tell you how much I'm enjoying it. And that is despite the fact it hasn't actually been a perfect experience. Um, I have never had problems with any Diamond Art Club kits before in terms of quality. Any company out there is sometimes going to put out kits that aren't quite at their usual quality because, you know, the manufacturing process isn't perfect. So um, I knew that it could happen, but I'd, I'd never had problems. This one has a couple of problems so the first thing is that a lot of the gl the glue well not a lot of the glue but like fairly frequently you'll hit a patch where the glue is really slidey like you put the drill down and it just goes whoosh um and it's a problem that I had heard of and I thought okay well I'll just leave it uncovered because it means that the glue isn't cured properly um and I left it uncovered for hours and hours and hours and it didn't really make any difference. <laughs> um, so I just, I've just been cracking on with that. But I emailed Diamond Art Club and said, you know, this is the problem I'm having. What do you suggest? And they said, well, you can try leaving it uncovered for a couple of hours. And I said, well, I've already tried leaving it uncovered for probably five hours or so. Um, and it's, you know, maybe a tiny bit better, but not like noticeably. So I think, you know, <laughs> that that would be... Um, that's not really going to do the trick. And then before I knew it, they just, they said, right, we're really sorry. Um, normally, if there's a problem like that, because that glue curing issue should be solved, I guess, within a few hours of, of leaving it uncovered, that um, they would send you a replacement kit. But because this one's discontinued and they couldn't do that, they just refunded me the cost of this kit. So they sent me back like a sixth of the mystery box kit. Obviously, this kit didn't cost as much as a normal painting of this size um and I was really impressed you know I didn't ask for um a refund I wasn't particularly complaining because I know these things happen and like I say this has never happened to me before so I know it's not a common issue for them so yeah that was really appreciated um so I'm working on this kit basically for free and then the other day I emailed them again about the other problem that I've had with this kit which is that when I was kitting it up, I had big, big, big issues with static. Um, and then I, I dealt with it as best I could, got them all in pots. And I mentioned that because I think the ongoing problem I'm having is maybe something to do with static because the drills in this kit really clump. But it's different to the normal kind of clumping. Like I know people are going to comment, oh, if the drills are clumped together, sometimes they get stuck together in manufacturing and you can use a drill grinder or squish them between two trays and they break apart um, and it's it's fine. I know that this is different. <laughs> so I emailed Diamond Art Club and said, you know, do you know what's going on with this? Like, is there anything I can do? And sent them some pictures because these ones, they look like that. But actually, they're not stuck together. Like, you can just take your finger and break them apart. They're clinging together, like it's maybe lingering static. But then they're not jumping around in the tray like you normally expect static drills to do. So I don't know if it is or isn't static. But what I'm finding is I can 
squish them between trays to break them apart and then that works fine while I'm using them but then I put them back in the pot and they, they just clump back together again so basically every time I have to get certain colours out I have to squish them apart and then other colours it's not so bad and some colours are absolutely fine um, so yeah, I, I emailed Diamond Art Club and they talked about some things and I explained how, you know, it's a little bit different. The usual tricks aren't quite working. And they reminded me that they have their insurance so they can replace up to eight colours. And I said, to be honest, it's it's most colours to varying degrees. I think I'm just going to persevere. You know, it is what it is. I'm still enjoying the kit at the end of the day. You know, I'm I love this painting so much and other aspects of it, like how well the drills fit together and how how beautiful these really even square drills are. Um, so much that I'm still enjoying it. Um, so I said I was just going to persevere and then they emailed back again without me making a complaint, without me asking for anything, saying as compensation for the inconvenience, they'd added uh, 1,500 points to my rewards account. So I'm basically in profit working on this painting. I feel kind of guilty about it because I'm still really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, as I say, I didn't, I didn't ask for compensation. Um, I think it's just a really good reflection of how their customer service can be that, you know, they compensated me for the issues I'm having, which whilst I'm still enjoying it, they, they were genuine issues. Um, and, you know, aspects where the quality wasn't quite up to their usual standard. Yeah, so that's been an interesting experience. Anyway, looking closer at what I've done, you'll see this is very, very heavy with confetti yet again. So it's quite interesting why I get on so much better with this one than I do with the old waterway cottage. And I think a lot of that comes back to things like the drills fitting together well, not so much trash, that kind of thing. And the variety of colours, you know, there is a lot of green, but it's not so dense. Um, but yeah, I couldn't really tell you because at face value, I feel like it doesn't make sense that I don't feel the same way about those paintings. And yet, I really enjoy this one um, and not so much the other. So yeah, one of those weird things. <laughs> But yeah, I'm just about to put this one away. I've just finished my most recent row today and I'm going back to the old waterway cottage to chip away at that a little, a little bit more. And then I'm not sure what I'll do next. I'll probably just come back to this, to be honest. And for now, I'm keeping it at two whips. Um, I'm not sure how long that will last. <laughs> Um, I suspect soon I will fancy getting out a round kit or a painting that just doesn't really have much confetti. Um, I've got a couple of paintings arriving soon that I'm really excited to see and I may think about having a go with one of those. Um, so we shall see. Yeah, so that is my quarter four October to December 2022 review. <laughs> Um, I really like doing these videos. I hope that they are enjoyable to watch. It, it's it's interesting for me to see how much changes within a three month period. Um, maybe I'll do a video about what my whips are at the end of March, but I will do a whole 12 month diamond painting anniversary review um, of all of the paintings that I complete from April 2022 to April 2023 when we get to April. So yeah. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this. Um, I'm enjoying getting back to filming, sort of getting back to a bit of normality after Christmas. My son is off school until Thursday, which is the day after tomorrow. Um, so I've just got a little bit more of the school holidays to go um, and then I'll have a bit more time for filming. So yeah, hopefully you'll be seeing a bit more of me in the next few weeks. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.